Welcome to another episode of 7 Minutes Medicine. We're going to talk about hypercalcemia. First, we're going to talk about uh, history and physical hypercalcemia affecting many organ systems. So for the neurologic system, it can cause decreased concentration, confusion. For the renal system, it can cause a picture of diabetes and sepsis like polyuria and polydipsia. In the GI, it can cause nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and the picture of pancreatitis. For the musculoskeletal system, you might have some kind of bone pain. For the cardiovascular, the most important thing, it can cause short QT interval. So the first step in uh, diagnosis is to confirm if this is real hypercalcemia because the lab will send you the total calcium so you can use this equation to correct for the albumin and um, there are many other equations you can use but I feel comfortable using this equation and if uh, the calcium is still high then you can check ionized calcium after that you can order PTH assay to differentiate PTH dependent from PTH independent so if the PTH is low or low normal like less than 20 then probably I will say this is PTH uh, independent hypercalcemia. So the differential diagnosis uh, of that first you have uh, to rule out embolization, especially in old age. You have also to rule out milk alcohol syndrome by asking about the excessive use of antiacids, especially if the patient has alkalosis and low magnesium. Also, it's very helpful to order 25 vitamin D level to see if it's elevated then most likely this is vitamin D intoxication and also 125 vitamin D level uh, if it's elevated this is most likely lymphoma and granulomatous disease also it is helpful to rule out malignancy by ordering PTH related peptide and to rule out multiple myeloma by ordering serum and urine protein electrophoresis and also you may check for the hyperthyroidism with the thyroid profile and you can also rule out rare causes like adrenal insufficiency and pheochromocytoma. But if the PTH came back high normal or elevated, this is most likely primary slash tertiary hyperparathyroidism or familiar hypocalcuric hypercalcemia, uh, which there is a loss of function mutation in the calcium sensing receptor and the parathyroid gland and the kidneys. So the parathyroid, this receptor shut down the excessive production of PTH when there's high calcium. And in the kidneys, it will prevent the reabsorption of calcium. So when this is receptor not working, this will result in excessive production of the PTH, high calcium, and excessive reabsorption of calcium in the kidneys. So this is why we have hypercalcemia with hypocalciuria. So first step in the management of hypercalcemia, you have to stratify um, the severity of hypercalcemia. So it can be a mild, less than 12, or a moderate, 12 to 14, or severe, more than 14 milligram per deciliter. So if it's mild, there is no immediate treatment. You have to avoid the precipitant factor like antiacids or vitamin D supplement and also you can advise patients to have good hydration. If it's moderate then if there is no symptoms I will treat it as mild but if there is severe symptoms I will treat it as severe hypercalcemia. In severe hypercalcemia the first step is volume expansion with significant amount of fluid like tons of fluid. You can give 200 to 300 cc per hour and you can adjust that to maintain at least 100 cc urine out per hour. Also you can use calcitonin which can be uh, given as uh, intramuscular or subcutaneous uh, injection. You can give the first dose and see the patient is a responder and then you can repeat it every 12 hours. I will not give more than four doses because of tachyphylaxis. You can also use bisphosphonate like zolindronic acid or pamidronate and those medications will take one to two days to kick in. So ideally you have to start giving them on a presentation to see the effect after 
uh, two days. Also, you can use denosumab if there is contraindication to base phosphonate, especially in malignant hypercalcemia, and it will take two to four days to kick in. Hemodialysis can be used if the patient has uh, kidney failure, severe volume overload, or have a very high calcium of 18 to 20 within neurologic uh, manifestations. A prednisone 20 to 40 mg uh, can be used to lower calcium in uh, lymphoma and glomerulonephritis disease, and it will take two to five days to kick in. So final thoughts, first step to make sure this is real hypercalcemia by correcting to albumin and manage ionized calcium. Then you have to differentiate if it's PTH dependent versus PTH independent. And then for the management, you have to stratify the degree of hypercalcemia, mild or moderate or severe, and then you have to manage accordingly. Thank you for listening and hopefully we can See you in another episode of Civil Minutes Medicine.